This is Donald Trump at a fighting anti-Semitism in America event in Washington, D.C. on Thursday, September 19th, 2024. It was organized by Jewish Voices for Trump. Trump is a foreign agent for Israel. He says he promises to make Israel great again. By doing so, it automatically makes America worse off drawing it into wars for Israel. The event was historic in nature as Trump committed to use executive orders to condemn and combat anti-Semitic behavior. In other words, to damn the First Amendment and come after his fellow Americans at the behest of Jews. Speak against Israel and its atrocities and you'll be a target. In the audience was his number one donor, or more accurately, his biggest Jewish paymaster, Miriam Adelson, the widow of the late odious Zionist and Jew, Las Vegas casino mogul, Sheldon Adelson, who had white carpet in his office so one day it could turn red with the blood of the Palestinian people. Watch Trump and we'll be back. But take special note when Trump doubles down and promises to protect Jews against the anger of Americans who've seen their nation handed to Jews and Israel to commit genocide and crimes against its neighbors by provoking a wider Middle East war, which Israel will have America fund, fight, and have young Americans die for Israel and its greater Israel project to control all the land between the Nile River in Egypt and Euphrates River in Iraq abutting Iran. It's the divine Abrahamic covenant between Abraham and God acting as a realtor promising the Middle East to the Jews. Go figure. It's like a car thief stealing cars cars because God promised the cars to him. So I say 47 days from now, we're going to defeat Kamala Harris. You have to defeat Kamala Harris. More than any other people on earth, Israel, I believe, has to defeat her. You know that? I, I, and I've never said this before. I'm thinking, Miriam, more than any people on earth, Israel has to defeat her. I really believe that it's a disaster for Israel. And you know why, and you've heard her statements. We're going to take back our country, and we're going to make Israel great again, and we're going to make America great again. We're going to make them both great again, greater than ever before. My promise to Jewish Americans is this. With your vote, I will be your defender, your protector, and I will be the best friend Jewish Americans have ever had in the White House. You know that. Thank you. The Jews have endured terrible persecution, and you know that. We've all read it. We've studied it. They've gone through a lot. And those seeking their destruction, we will seek their destruction. We have to bring back the death penalty. They have to pay the ultimate price. There you go. That's the next president of the United States and Israel if elected on November 5th. Trump is owned lock, stock, and barrel by Jews. Miriam Adelson has promised Trump $100 million for his election campaign. It comes with the condition that he supports Gaza and the West Bank being folded into Israel so there can never be a two-state solution. This means Palestinian ethnic cleansing genocide. In 2016, Sheldon Adelson promised Trump $250 million if Trump moved America's embassy to Jerusalem. Trump delivered by moving the embassy, and like a typical Jew, Adelson only delivered on part of his $250 million promise. We have to face up to the fact that America is owned and controlled by Jews. Here is a joint sitting of the U.S. Congress on July 24, 2024, addressed by Israel's Prime Minister, Ben Benjamin Netanyahu. He spoke for 53 minutes and the Congress people gave him 58 standing ovations like trained SEALs who are bought, bribed, and blackmailed. You can see how much they're paid by going to track APAC.com for a conga line of the culprits. It's a roll call of shame how much each congressional traitor has taken from Jews to sell out America like Donald Trump. We'll then close with Representative Thomas Massey who recently came out to confirm the Jews at APAC own the Congress. Shame on Trump. Shame on him. Totally owned, bought, and paid for by Jews. This has to stop America. It has to stop. Take America back again or the republic is gone for good. idea of a foreign government playing in our political campaigns openly. W- openly in that uh, they're showing you they're doing it, but opaquely in that you can't track it because they're not registered. Is, is there any other Republican who has your views on this? Well, I have Republicans who come to me on the floor 
and say, I wish I could vote with you today. Yours is the right vote, but I would just take too much flack back home. And I have Republicans who come to me and say, that's wrong what APAC is doing to you. Let me talk to my APAC person. By the way, everybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who uh, is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are, you know, firmly embedded in APAC. And every member has someone like this? Every, I don't know how it works on the Democrat side. Uh, but that's how it works on the Republican side. And when they, and when they come to DC, you go have lunch with them and they've got your cell number and you have conversations with them. So I've had like, that's cr absolutely crazy. I've had four members of Congress say, I'll talk to my APAC person. And like, it's literally what we call them, my APAC guy. <laughs> I'll talk to my APAC guy and see if I can get him to, you know, dial those ads back. Why have I never heard this before? It doesn't benefit anybody. Why would they want to tell their constituents that they've basically got a buddy system with somebody who's representing a foreign country? It, it doesn't benefit the congressman for people to know that, so they're not going to tell you that. It's it's in. It, it, have you seen any other country do anything like this? Like no. Ru Russia, Russia obviously determines the outcome of our elections. We keep hearing that. D does anyone have a Putin guy that they talk to? Yeah. Not only do they not have a Putin guy, <laughs> look, they don't, they, they don't have a Britain guy. They don't have an Australian guy. They, you know, they don't have a Germany dude. Like, it's the only country that does this, that has somebody that, like, uniformly, I guarantee you there's some spreadsheet at APAC where, <laughs> where, you know, the, the APAC dude is, who's matched up with the congressman is there. And then all the congressman's votes on the issue. Oh, has the congressman been to Israel? They, they pay for trips for congressmen and their spouses to go to Israel. I may be, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not the only Republican who hasn't taken the APAC trip to Israel, but I'm probably one of a dozen that hasn't taken that trip. And the other ones just haven't got around to it. What's the trip like? Do you know? Um, it's kind of like, I think, vacation-y. You go see the wall. You go see the, you know, the sites, uh, things like that. <laughs> 